All right, let's talk about this because a lot of you may have seen this on your social media feeds or something very similar to this, showing a major hurricane off the state of Florida, but with little to no context. So my goal in this video is to kind of break down what this is, uh, what we're looking at at this time. No hype, just giving you the information that is available at this time. This is currently the 4th of September, 2025, doing this update right around 10 a.m. Eastern time. So first off, we do have a high chance of development from the National Hurricane Center. You can see this area out there. It's towards the west of Africa. I've been tracking it for a few days. And really at this time, the convection is flaring up within it, and it is continuing to kind of get its act together. One thing I do want to know is its initialization is a bit further south than where Aaron first initialized. And what does that mean? Well, it means that it would have a higher chance of running towards the Caribbean instead of recurving. Here's a look at some of our long range model guidance, the GFS versus the ECMWF. And this goes out to about the 14th. What I was just showing you there at the start of this, that was the ECMWF on the 17th. So that's about two weeks out. This is about a week and a half. And you can kind of see our low pressure center right in here, just off the coast of uh, Puerto Rico versus the ECMWF, the GFS pulls it a little bit further towards the north. This is still a week out. There still is a lot of uncertainty. And this is another way of just looking at some of the guidance here, showing this moving off towards the west. So, you know, a lot of the models continue to come together. This is moving over an area with above average sea surface temperatures. Actually, not just the sea surface temperatures, but the overall kind of heat of built from the uh, surface of the water down. It's pretty deep in that area of the Caribbean. So this is all indicators that we're probably going to have a, a decent storm kind of developing out here. Uh, I, if it does get named, which I do believe it will, it will be called Gabrielle. Now I'll take a look at some of the main things I want you to take away from this. Still lots of time to watch. Plenty of warm sea surface temperatures out there ahead of it. Models have been consistent. I didn't spell consistent right there in developing something, but the peak of hurricane season is also on the 10th of December. So to have something out there wouldn't be completely out of the ordinary. So let's go back to this. Now, as I mentioned, this is the ECMWF guidance and we can change this over to even the GFS and you see how this is further towards the north, but a little bit different. Both kind of take it out towards the coast of Florida. Now, a lot of people just show this. This is the operational model, but do remember that the operational model is basically just a summary of the 32 model runs within one specific run. So we get the operational updated every six hours. But then let's break this down and dissect it to those 32 runs here. And this is showing in the SpaghettiOs is what we like to call them. Kind of showing this out through next Thursday, the 12th to 13th. You can see that low pressure area for the GFS. Now what this is showing though is all the different runs within the GFS kind of uh, put out here and now what the final operational does is it consolidates that and it kind of averages it out what this shows us is confidence now there is a confidence that a storm is going to be developing here but you see how the it's kind of all over the place some lows take this all the way out towards bermuda some actually you can see one here into the gulf there is a huge spread so when you see this on socials or something like that and you go hold on a, a major hurricane off of jacksonville on the the 18th here i want you to understand and realize that um, there is still a long range outlook here there is still lots of uncertainty and just understand that this is still pretty early on uh, in this storm systems development so for the time being just going to do our best to keep you posted and keep you um, updated here every six hours a new run comes out every six hours this has been wavering we really need to get this developed and just like what we saw with Aaron once we get recon out there if the low pressure center does develop in this it is named and we have recon flying into it, the confidence in the forecast drastically increases. Once we had all three of those together with Aaron, if you remember, we were saying this is going to turn towards the Bahamas and then switch towards the north, passing just towards the west of Bermuda. And that's exactly what happened, despite what you may have heard on socials or something like that. And my goal with these longer updates, and if you watch this all the way through, is to make sure, educate, and inform so we can get ahead of some of that misinformation, especially when you're seeing model runs like this right now. Now, it's not to say Florida would not get a hurricane in mid-September. It, it, it's totally plausible and realistic given that it's the peak of hurricane season. Just at least at this time of recording this, 
That is not the case. We're still watching. So, as always, thanks for watching. Check out Hurricane Central at firstcoastnews.com if you want more information. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta, and yeah, always stay safe out there, friends.